In this episode, we're going to focus on creating a custom resource that maps to an application. Custom resources oftentimes make it more clear how we express our controls inside of our profiles. So let's get started by creating a Git profile. We see that we have a number of controls here defining expectations about which branches that are available with the Git repository, what is the current branch, and some of the commits. We're going to execute a scan with this profile, and we see the output from the scan shows that everything's passing, but the output doesn't clearly describe really what is happening. If you look at these commands, you don't get a clear picture of what we're essentially trying to assert. So let's define a custom resource called git, which is given that git directory. And then within that git resource, we're going to define a new individual test where it says its branches should include master. So we're going to execute a scan, and of course we're going to see an error here, an exception or stack trace, because the git method and git resource is not defined yet. So we're going to open up within our profile inside of the libraries directory, the git.rb file, and we're going to define a git class that is a subclass of an inspect resource. I'll place some header information in here, and then I'll define my class and subclass our inspect.resource. Then I'm going to give it a name called git. I'll save the file and then execute a scan. I see that when I execute a scan this time that I am providing an additional parameter to this resource that I have not yet uh, accepted. So each resource is going to define an initialize method. This initialize method for the git resource is going to accept the git dir, the path that we are providing it. And I'm going to store that path inside of an instance variable called path. When I return to the command line again, I'll execute a scan, and I see that my resource now is telling me that I do not have the branches method. Let's return to our resource and define a branches method. So I'm only going to define the branches method, I'll save the file, and I'll execute a scan again. Now the error message is telling me that the branches method is returning a nil value when it expects to have an array, or something that is able to accept the include method being invoked on it. I'm now going to use the inspect helper method, which enables me to invoke any other inspect resource. I'm going to use the command resource like I did inside of my control file, but this time inside of my resource. I'm going to perform that same git method that's going to look at the branches given my gitter that's stored in my path, and then I'm going to return the standard out of that command, and now I'm going to see a passing test. Here I see that the results of the standard out include the branch that I expect. I can also now write a test that asserts that the branches include our other branch, which is extending cookbook. Now I'm going to define a test that's going to assert that our current branch is currently set to master. The test here is going to, of course, require us to define a current branch method and invoke the inspect helper as we did before but we're going to take a little bit more time here looking at the results and parsing the contents of it. So I'm going to return to our git resource, and within the git resource I'm going to use that same inspect helper to define our command object. I'm going to invoke the same git branch command, and I'm going to look at the standard out. Now let's take a look quickly at what happens when you run git branch inside of that repository. You'll see that the current branch is denoted by the star that's placed in front of the branch name. So I'm going to strip off any other white space characters that are around it at the beginning or end of the uh, response and the standard out. I am then going to split that response into a number of lines. This is going to turn it into an array of text, of strings. And then I'm going to look through each one of those items to find the item that starts with the star character. So once I find that, I'm going to want to store the value, the result of that find, inside of a variable here. And I'm going to call that branch underscore name. That branch name is going to include a star character and some space characters around it. So what I'm going to do is replace that star character and strip off any space characters that exist around the branch name. I'm going to save that and then I'm going to execute our scan again, and I see that everything passes. If you'd like to learn more about Inspect, check out other videos in this series, our documentation, or tutorials.